Welcome everyone. I am super excited to be here again at ng-conf. My name is Dan Walleen and I'm going to be talking to you about sandcastles, sandboxes, and story time. Okay, there is going to be a little bit of code to it and a couple open source projects, but in reality we're going to talk about how you can increase your productivity by isolating your component development. Very, very cool and it'll literally revolutionize how you develop if you're not doing this right now. So with that, let's jump into a couple scenarios to explain the need for this. How many have this particular scenario at work? You write some code for a component, you save it, you refresh the browser. Okay, everything's good so far, but your component's a child component. It's several levels down, so you have to drill down or filter or page or do something to get to it. You finally get to it, only to realize you messed something up. Oops, I need to fix an issue. So let's repeat. And then we go back to step one and we do it all over again. And the reason we have to do this is we're loading the entire app usually. Not just the component we're working on, but the entire app. Or maybe some of you have this scenario. You're building the Sandcastle application, but your part of the app is just the top, all right? You're building that little guy right there. There's no foundation yet. The parent components, the services, all that stuff, it's not even built yet. Other teams or other people are working on that, maybe on your team. What do you do? Well, there's always workarounds. We can always start and start mocking things, but then you're going to have to go in and plug it in later and then work with the components and of the parents, and it gets kind of messy in things. So what if there was a better way? What if we could actually be more productive by building components in isolation? And we can. That's what I'm going to talk to you about. So the first thing we're going to discuss is something called Angular Playground. This is from some friends of mine at SoCreate. It's an open source project. Uh, they've been using it for years. I've been using it for a couple years, and it is just awesome. It's a great way to get started building components in isolation. So let me walk you through it. So this is an open source tool for building enterprise Angular components, directives, and pipes in isolation. That's the kind of big two words right there, in isolation. So you can go to angularplayground.it to get more information, but I'm going to introduce it to you here, and I'm going to show you how you can get started using it. Now before we do that, let me show you what it can do, because it's one of those seeing is believing type of things. So I'm going to come on over to VS Code, and I have my browser loaded. Now I've already run a Angular Playground command, which we're going to talk about momentarily, but you'll notice in the code I have this thing called a sandbox. So I'm importing this sandbox of and I have the sandbox of about component, which is the component I would like to work with. Now that particular component, if we just go to the about component HTML, it's pretty hard coded. All right, doesn't have inputs, doesn't use injected services, none of that. So what I'm gonna do is over here, I've already loaded Angular Playground, and you'll notice some hotkeys, control P or F2. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna get to this about component sandbox. Now, the sandbox lets me actually do live development against just this component. Notice I'm not loading the entire app. In fact, up top, you'll notice the scenario, and that's what this is referred to, is this is the about scenario. I can actually ship that to production as well, and I can even embed that URL with like an iframe into documentation if I want. All kinds of cool things you could do here. Now to show this, I can come in and say about us, I'll go ahead and save it, and boom, it updates live. Just like we would expect loading the normal app, but I'm only loading that one component, so it's super, super fast. It's, it's just great to work with once you get used to it. And then we're like, nah, I just like about, so we'll go ahead and put that back in, and there we go. Now I could also switch over to some others. We have with orders, okay, there's an orders component, or maybe I wanna do, with no orders, what's that state look like? I have different states in my component. Maybe I'm working with designers, the stakeholder of the project, other team members, the person developing the parent component, if that's what this uh, would be a child maybe. Then we could do all that right here. Uh, another example to wrap up this part is, here's with many customers. This is kind of a responsive type scenario. 
And then maybe you just want to show, you know, what's it look like with four customers or something, you know, pick a number. Well, here's with four. Here's with no data. Pretty nice. So I could go to that sandbox as well. This is a customer card component. So let's go to customer's card. Here's the component itself. And notice it has some customers that need passed in. Pretty simple. It's kind of a, if you're in the container presentation type of architecture, this would be the presentation type component. So let me go to the sandbox for this. You'll see customer's card component sandbox. And just like you saw before, we have this sandbox of and the component, but I have a second parameter here to pass some configuration because this one's not so simple. There's some injectables. There's some other modules I need, all that fun stuff. So what I can do then is import the modules I need that have all that service type functionality. There's my core. That has my core services. Here's some router testing functionality because if I go back to this, you'll notice that uh, it has some routing right here and here. So we're gonna inject kind of a fake version of that. And then we create the actual sandbox. So here's sandbox of, here's with all the customers. And what I've done is I've loaded some fake customer data. So we pass that in as the context to our sandbox template. So whatever we add here, that's actually what shows up when I do the hotkey. So let's go ahead and do that again. And notice these uh, labels here, you could say. Well, this customer's car component is kind of the top level. And then this with many customers, that's that one. With 10 customers, that's that one. And you get the idea. So scrolling on down, how do I do with 10? Well, it's really the same thing. I'm just going to slice it down to 10 or slice it down to 4. But notice with all these, I'm doing normal input binding, just like we would do. I also have with no customers being passed in, and that's the state you see right here without customer. Now, what's so great about this is not only can I develop against that one component, not load the whole app, so I don't have to waste time drilling down, but I can also now share this easily for docs. I can work with customers on this to make sure that one component I'm working with is isolated, we could style it more easily, things like that. So as you've seen, we have a sandbox, we add a component to the sandbox, and then it's kind of up to us to shovel in whatever that component needs. It could be declarations for child components, could be modules, could be the actual input property data like the customers I showed earlier. That's kind of on you to make sure it has all the data. It's very similar to when you write a unit test where you have to mock some things. Now, in addition to this, once we have that, to get started, here's all you have to do. You'll do ng add angular playground. That'll add all the files that you need and get you ready to go, including some scripts that you can have in package.json to run this. Then you build sandboxes. So if you want to develop a component in isolation, it needs a sandbox. We do ng generate angular playground sandbox, and then you give it the path to your component that you're working on. So if you've used the Angular CLI, which probably just about all of you have, this will be very comfortable to you and familiar. Now, once you have that sandbox of, you've added your scenarios, they're called, into the sandbox. That's your different states of the data. Then you can run it, and all you have to do is npm run playground, and that's gonna launch a script that they add to package.json, and you're ready to go. And then you'd see exactly what I showed you in the browser earlier. So that's Angular Playground, and it's a great way to get started isolating your components so that you can work with them directly. You don't have to load the whole app. Very productive once you get the hang of it. Now, there is another option I'm going to go through as well, and that's Storybook. Now, Storybook's very similar in that you can develop components in isolation. You can have different stories, not scenarios in this case. So let's walk through how we would get started with that. Well, Storybook gives you a little bit more of a, a UI. It's basically a web app you get. And on the left here, you're gonna notice that we have charts and some other things. These are categories for different components we can run in isolation. Now, what's nice is you get this component catalog on the left. In the middle, you're gonna have your components so you can click on the different ones you want. And then down on the bottom, they have a ton of what they call add-ons. 
Uh, you can add on controls where I can actually tweak like the input properties right here in the browser and see how that affects the component. Now to get started with this is very simple. You can run this mpx-p command, storybook CLI, and then initialize it as a type of Angular. Storybook can work with a lot of different frameworks out there from React to Angular to Vue and others. So that's why we say dash dash type Angular in this case. Now what that will do is initialize again. It will actually add some default stories into your project that you can use. And then once you're ready to run those stories or even develop your own, you can do npm run storybook. So let's take a look now at what that looks like on the storybook side. So let's switch over to VS Code again, and this is the same exact project. It's this Angular Jumpstart. But you'll notice I have this little Stories folder here. Now that appeared because I ran the mpx command that I showed earlier, and I did the sb init with the type of Angular. That added some built-in stories. Now one of the most simple ones they add is they'll add a button component, very basic button component. It has a few inputs though. And then with that button component, they add a button stories that you'll see right here. And let me go ahead and show you that a little more. So you'll notice that we have this storybook Angular and we have a story and meta. Well, what you're gonna do is things like your services, declarations, and other things that a component needs to run in isolation, you're gonna come in and define those in this default section. Notice that it has our title, example button, well, if we go over to the right, we have example, and then we have button right here. And if I click on that, notice I have primary, secondary, large, and small. And then if I go down to the bottom here, you move this up a little, I can even tweak these input properties. So we could say primary false. Notice the button changes. We could select a different button color. Maybe I want it to be green for whatever reason. Well, we could do that. Maybe I want to change the label to submit or something along those lines. Well, we can do that as well. And so this allows us using something called controls to actually change what's going on with our input properties. Really, really nice. Now over to the left here, back in the editor, notice that we have our component type is button and I'm just importing the normal Angular button component. And then I'm setting that the type of background color, and if we go back, you'll notice that coming on down, there's a background color, which is a string, but down here, notice it was actually a color picker. Well, the way we're able to do that is to say, hey, the background color, the control type I wanna show is actually color. That will change it instead of a string into a color picker. Really, really nice. Now the others, it kind of just figures out. The primary here, go ahead and go to that. Notice that's a Boolean because it knew it was a Boolean. And then we also have our label and things along those lines right here as well. We can even change the button size notice. Really nice. Now this is just what they give you out of the box. That's all defined up in this default meta area. This is your metadata about your component. Now the actual story is first gonna be defined using this template. Notice we have a template which is of type story of button, that's our component, and then we're gonna assign that equal to a little lambda function here or arrow function. And that's where we're gonna return the component to use for this template and the props to use, args. I'll show you where those come into play in just the next part here. Now, going back over to the browser, notice we have primary, secondary, large, and small. Well, those are defined using the template bind. This is how we're gonna set up the template. Here's our primary, and now we're gonna pass in arguments. These are the inputs for the primary input and the label input. And again, going back to the component, notice that we have a primary input property, and there's our label input property. So now we're gonna pass those in using this args. Now that is what renders this right here. For secondary, you'll notice that we have a different background color for the button and things. Well, secondary, we didn't say primary true, so it's primary false, you'll notice. And then you'll notice the label is button again. For the large that we see over here to the right, you'll notice that we have size is large. Everything else is the same, and then small, we have the same type of setup right here. 
So you can see that's really, really easy. Now, let me show you a little more custom one. Remember earlier, we had an about and it was kind of hard coded. Well, we can go to the about stories I made and you'll notice that I've imported the about component. That's about it right there. But I've also imported in the metadata section, this decorators and I have module metadata. Common module was used here. Okay, really basic in this example. Now notice I have my template again for story about component. We have our arrow function for the about component, and then I have that component and the props for it. Now this one doesn't have any props, so it's extremely basic. So all I do is say template.bind, I call it about, and I didn't give it any arguments because there are no input properties. Now over here to the left, you'll notice on about, there's my about component, but if we go to this in isolation, let's just type about here, find about component HTML, change that again to about us, save, it updates. So very similar to Angular Playground in that regard. We'll go ahead and save, and we're back to here. To wrap up, I can also come on down to another story I set up, and this is for the customer card that we looked at earlier. Now this one is on the left, you'll see customer cards, and it just displays a bunch of customers. In fact, all the customers, and these are all mocked customers again. I mentioned this in the Angular Playground one. Well, this one's a little more involved because the component itself, in addition to the common module, we need the router testing and the shared module. Now, because of that, we also need providers. Here's our track by service, and this is actually injected into the constructor of this customer's car component. So if you're going, oh, this looks a lot like some of the things I might do in a unit test, you'd be right. In some regards it is, we're just setting up the infrastructure, kind of bootstrapping what the component needs. Now, just like we did earlier, we're gonna have our template, but this time it's our customer's card component. That's gonna be passed in through this arrow function. We define it, and then we have our args. Now the args in this case do matter because this has an input property, and the input property is called customers. So what we're gonna do is say, all right, let's bind to that template. I'm gonna call it customer cards. That's where this one on the right comes from, customer cards. And then for the arguments that are gonna be passed in, well, I have an input property called customers. So I'm gonna pass in the actual customer's data that I have. Now, what if we wanted to come in and do the same thing, but for maybe 10 customers? Well, just like I showed earlier, we could do that, but we could say customers dot slice, get rid of that. And we could say zero comma 10 as an example. Maybe we'll call this customer cards 10, customer cards 10, save, and there we go. So now I could see 10 total customers, or maybe you know I want four of them. Well, we can create these different stories by simply changing this. Let's change that to four and four. And then we'll change this to four right here. And there we go. We now have a customer's cards four, and there's our four customers. And then finally, of course, if we want, let me just duplicate this down real quick. We can come on in and say no customers. And we'll say maybe none here. We'll change that to none. And then maybe in this case, we pass null. And now I can define that story. And there we go, no records found. So now I can really easily switch between all this. In fact, you can see the customer input property data down here. There's our null here. But we could actually, you know, adjust this down, maybe move it a little bit if we wanted. But now I can easily flip through the different stories for this one component, do live development against the component, and I'm in business. It's a really productive way to work with it. And in the case of embedding this in docs, I can do the same thing. Now, one thing I wanna point out is there was a little extra work I did here on this, again, SB demo branch is what I'm on, by the way. Um, so I switched from my main to that. And if I come on up, you're gonna notice this little storybook folder. It adds this for you. Now, I had some kind of global styles I wanted to add in this case. So I threw them in this file storybook knows about called previewhead.html. You'll see uh, bootstrap and a couple things here. There's other ways to do it. This was a real kind of quick and dirty way to do it. But that allows me to get some of my styles. 
If you're working with SAS or less, you can even do that with a Storybook or Angular Playground as well. So I hope that gives you a really good idea what I mean by developing components in isolation. It's just so productive once you get the hang of it. And whether you prefer to use Angular Playground or Storybook, either of them are gonna do the same thing as far as improving your productivity. So you can get more information from the links here, angularplayground.it or storybook.js. Uh, if you wanna to get to the project I was running, you'll find the main branch, that's where I had the Angular Playground, and then there's the SB demo branch, and that's where I'll have the Storybook demos, real simple ones. Grab all that from GitHub if you'd like. So with that, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about sandboxes and stories, of course, in the context of code and isolated components. Not only is it a lot of fun, but it really has boosted my productivity as I work with and build different components. And keep in mind, whether it's Angular Playground or Storybook, you can share these and embed them in documentation. You could use them with stakeholders. You can use them with designers. There's all kinds of scenarios where this would apply. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you get a chance to try this out.